higher standard than our local municipalities ever would. So if you ask Bradford County municipalities what they think of the roads, and we even asked the residents, and um, you know, some complaints about the inconvenience and the fact that they broke them up. But, but right now, pretty much everybody um, is universally happy with, with the roads. They've rebuilt our road system, and they've rebuilt them to a standard that was a lot higher than the local municipalities have ever built them to because they've got to carry the heavier equipment. So, you know, our, our local municipalities would have never had the money to do that. Um, they have resulted in blacktopping an awful lot of these roads. Um, that might be a concern because later on, after the, the, the gas companies aren't around to maintain them and repair them, you know, ma maintaining blacktop is a lot more expensive than it is the dirt around the road. But these, again, these are the roads that um, the gas companies put back. These are all formal uh, dirt roads that, that they, they have now uh, rebuilt. And they've spent tens of millions of dollars. I know one company alone spent about $50 million in Bradford and Susquehanna County. Our state DOT for maintaining roads budget was only $5 million a year. So again, that, that was an economic need for them. They couldn't um, work with the inconvenience of closed roads, so um, they do that. There were two ways that our municipalities have worked um, with the gas companies. One is a posting and bonding program where Essentially, you have an engineer go out and you evaluate the road, what are the weight capacities of that road, and you post that road for that weight limit. And then, and then anybody that exceeds that weight limit or has heavy loads has to post a bond, and, and, and that bond is kind of a security that if that road breaks up, um, then that entity has to fix that road, and if they don't, then they default on their bond. Well, the bond, the bond was pitifully small, and so, um, it, didn't, it didn't really cover if somebody decided to say, nuts to it, I'm not going to fix it. Um, you know, fixing roads is very expensive for um, those of you that are municipal officials. So what wound up evolving is this road use maintenance agreements that the companies had in their pocket already, and that was their plan, was to get municipalities to sign these road use maintenance agreements. Essentially what it says is that if we break it, we fix it. And, and you know, quite frankly, I know I've been in a number of meetings with our municipal officials and they said it's, it's been working. And again, that's, that's usually because the standard of what the companies need is a lot higher than what we ever do on our own local roads. So again, that's, that's really done a lot. Um, another big um, side of impact has been any rail siding sites, bringing in all this material, bringing in the sand for the hydrofracking, bringing in um, the chemicals, the pipes and all that. Um, if anyone had rail sightings, um, they were they, they turned into quite a, a, a lucrative operation. But again, these, these, these rail sightings have grown tremendously. So another landscape impact, if you keep on track of all those landscape impacts, has been a result of that. So um, and this is you know, this is a rail, this is the siding, this is the high school, so this is right next to the high school. Again, no zoning in Bradford County. Um, compressor stations. Um, the gas that's coming out of the ground is very high uh, pressure. Um, the company has said usually for shale gas it, it, it spikes and then it comes down and then the plateaus for a long time. They said they haven't seen it come down from the spike in Bradford County in the five years yet. So very high pressure. So as a result, um, what they're usually doing is valving it down to put it into the transmission lines. But eventually that will drop and so they build compressor stations to, to um, increase that pressure to match what the transmission line is and to move it through that 700 miles of pipeline. Um, it's hard to get a handle on how many of those we're going to see. And I talked with one company and they said, well, you know, each, each compressor station, depending on how big it is, might average about 50 wells um, per, um, per compressor station. Again, if you figure six or seven wells per, per pad, you're only looking at 10 pads per Compressor station, so we could see an awful lot of compressor stations show up on the landscape that um, that might be another thing that we're looking at. Water replacement um, um, in, in Pennsylvania, um, if there's a problem with water, it's assumed that it's the driller's responsibility unless they can demonstrate otherwise. What what the companies have done is they do pre-testing of all the landowners' water. Um, within a certain radius, um, it used to be just several hundred feet. Now they're out to about 2,500 feet or so. Companies do that for their own defense, um, largely. I mean, Bradford County, again, a lot of 
um, like I said, 20,000 of our home, we have 30,000 housing units, 20,000 are on private wells, um, and um, I could probably say that 99% of them never tested their water for anything more than maybe bacteria. Um, so there was a lot of ignorance about what our water quality was. Um, we do, our geology, one of the biggest problems um, as far as water quality that I've seen as a result of this is that our geology, we have shallow methane. So we have, we have organic layers or shell layers that are shallower than the Marcellus um, at about 1,000 feet or more. Um, some of them even shallower. And, and they contain methane gas. And so um, when the companies, they first put a large bore in, maybe 30 inches, they put a pipe down, it goes about 100 feet. They fill that with, um, with a grout that seals it up. Then they drill another pipe in the center of that, another hole in the center of that one. It goes down to about 1,000 feet. And then they, they case and, and, and cement that in place, and that's to assure that there's no contamination to the water supply. In the process of drilling that, that thousand feet before they, they, they case it and seal it, they go through some of the shallow gas, and that's where we seem to have uh, been unique for the companies. So when they first started out, we had a lot of that shallow methane follow the hole up and then basically charge some of our shallower drinking water supplies. So that shallow methane was, was a big issue initially, and that's probably what you've read a lot about in the news. Um, with some of those methane uh, contaminations. To date, you know, I haven't heard or seen anyone document any water quality issues as a result of fraction. It's all been part of that first drilling. And once they sealed it up, um, sometimes it goes away right away, sometimes it, it might take years, I don't know. Have no handle on, on how many of these. I know they're out there. Um, there are some times where the company um, does a settlement and it's been a gag order as a result of that. Uh, but we have some documented cases. Again, how many, I don't know. Um, this, is, this is an alpha. This is an example of what happens when they, when they do discover that there's methane in the system. They, they put a venting system in. And then um, this was, uh, again, this was in the, this is an interesting story. The village of Alba uh, was on Route 14. Um, and um, there was a, this person's house here. Um, claimed that the water had turned green when the well was drilled about half a mile away. And um, folks from Gasland showed up with their film crew. Um, our DPP people showed up. The um, news crew from Elmira came down and showed up. And they all got around and of course the water wasn't green. It couldn't, couldn't you know, water look normal. But they did tests, found out there was methane in this water, and, as well as the church right next door and a couple other residences in the, in the village. And, and in the course of this meeting, and I had the public, uh, the city officials there also, the village in this case, uh, the city, um, they were playing, well, there was an old timer there that said, hey, you know, we've had gas in our water for 50 years, as long as I've lived here, we've always had gas in our water. So that night on the Elmira TV station, you know, they had the sensational, um, coverage of everybody there, as, you know, as well as the folks from Gasland, that was news in itself. And then at the end of the news release, sure enough, they had the flaming faucet, you know, picture on there. And boy, our village um, supervisors were just furious because there were no flaming faucets in, in that village. But somehow that made it into the newsreel. And when they complained, they said, oh, geez, well, we're not sure how that got on there. But we made good news. <laughs> So like, like I said, you got to practice critical thinking. I, I did, and this is just for illustration, but um, sat down and started to add up what all those land use impacts were. So if you look at 113, and these are as of December 31st of 2012, 113 water pounds at about 15 acres each. You can see that there's about 1,600 acres of change. Um, this is our current permit, 2,400 or 2,500 permits, and about five acres there, so you know another 12,000 plus acres. Um, same thing with access roads, at about two acres each, so that adds another 5,000 acres. Um, it's 1,400 miles of pipeline, if you're saying 800. If you look at the temporary water lines, and, and the reason I threw them in is because they do clear the land, they do put that right away in, so you do have landscape impacts, even if it's temporary. Um, I put 15 quarries, I'm sure that number's a lot higher. 
30 supply yards, and again, I'm sure that number's higher, but we had no way of keeping track of that. We have 48 water intake sites, 15 compressor stations currently. That comes up to about 33,000 acres of disturbance in Bradford County. That's, that, that's quite a bit when you take a look at um, all those little, little operations. That, and that's not counting the, the big headquarters of the buildings you know, that the, the companies built in Bradford County, and the, the training center. Um, there's a number of uh, support industries that have started to do development in the, in the county also that have had land disturbance. I, I just didn't count those. If, if you take a look, put that in perspective, that, that's our average farm is about 200 acres. That's 167 farms worth of land. And, and if you put all our boroughs and villages together, that's about four times the land area of all those boroughs and villages. So, about 720,000 acres. Um, you know, other, just to touch on some other issues, you know, legal issues. Um, it's been a real big business. Uh, when they started leasing, every wire in town hung out a shingle saying, we're expert at leases. Um, it, it, I mean, they might have known how to put a, a, a lease agreement together, but they really didn't know what amendments and, and, and wires to put on those leases, leases. So that, like I said, I think I mentioned that at the beginning, we're pretty big at including the professionals. So trying to train um, the lawyers was a big thing. The labor, the local industry, a lot of competition um, for, for labor. Uh, again, uh, people that come out of high school um, were, were making $40,000, $50,000 as a roughneck that, if they could get the job. Um, a lot of the peripheral companies, the welding companies, the pipe companies were all hiring laborers. That, that was great Our, during the height of the hard times that we just went through. It was down to 3% um, unemployment when we were traditionally very depressed. So there was a lot of economic gain um, that way. And, and then, you know, there's the haves and the have-nots, too. Um, it did drive up prices for those that weren't part of the gas industry. Uh, a good example is anybody with a CDL license. I mean, people driving all those trucks and those water trucks were, were making um, great money. But if you were, say, um, a milk carrier, all of a sudden farmers had to pay more money to have their milk haul because there was more competition. And, and that drove the prices of trucking up. Um, at first, they didn't hire a lot of local people because some of those jobs were skilled. So a lot of a lot of the labor, like I said, we had you know, crazy estimates of 10 plus 20,000 people that, that followed the industry in the Petro County um, because they did you know, they're gradually replacing those workers with local workers. Um, you don't just put somebody on the rig and say, okay, you're a skilled worker now. They start them at the bottom and then they work them up through the system. So now that it's been five or six years, we're starting to see more and more local people. I think it was kind of a, a, kind of a running chuckle when you know, there's, there was a lot of derogatory comments about you know, all the outsiders that were in there. You know, the, the word was you need to be cautious because when they go to other states, instead of a lot of Texas and Oklahoma license plates, they get a lot of Pennsylvania license plates. Um, <laughs> something to think about. Education, those knowledge and skills, um, we don't have a college in Bradford County, but you know there's a, a tech school down in Lycoming like, County and some of the, the, the off-site campuses that we do have in our county. We're gearing up to for those specialized skills, um, you know, geology. Um, every every well has a geologist on site, and a lot of those different specialized skills. So um, a lot of that education is going on. Bankers and real estate. I mean, there's a whole issue. Is, okay, what is the value of property now? Um, actually, um, real estate people are saying, okay, the market is really tough now because people aren't selling their property. They're, they're, they're getting some value because of the, the gas industry. So the price of property did go up. Um, homes, credible housing was, was our, our very serious economic issue, our social and economic issue. Um, our, our price of rentals um, went for a house of about I think our, the uh, HUD listed it as about $565, I think, a month was the rate that they, they rated Bradford County at. And that's what you could rent a house for, somewhere around five or $600. That went to $1,500 or $2,500 a month. And so as a result, people uh, on fixed incomes, elderly, um, couldn't afford rent in Bradford County. So we, had, we have and continue to have a housing crisis. Um, 
motel rooms. Uh, they just built six new motels in Bradford County. And, and motel rates used to be somewhere around $50, $60 a night. It's up to $130 a night in Bradford County. And, and you've got to reserve a motel room a year ahead of time. Um, so, so again, you know, that's a real direct impact. The, the, the people that own the motels um, are, are just raking in the bucks, but the people um, that are being displaced as a result of this is a real serious, real serious issue. Um, I, I know, you know that's one of the impacts that social services, for, well, for example, you know, if someone's house burns down, usually the Red Cross finds housing for you temporarily until you get resettled. They're having to look two, three counties away before they can find some place to settle people and they're paying a lot more. So that's having an impact on social services and, and other things. So, um, and, and then the split estate whole issue, um, that was a real big boon for accountants and lawyers to, to start setting up LLCs and people that never had interested in the family farm or suddenly were very interested and so you've got a lot of family negotiations going on and, and a lot of these, um, a lot of business for surveyors, accountants, and, and um, lawyers um, in regards to that. Um, local municipalities, um, until last year, Pennsylvania had no way of realizing income. Um, they had no taxing ability. We were one of the few, if not the only states that couldn't do that. Um, and so as a result, any of these infrastructure impacts um, couldn't be mitigated. I know when we went down to Texas, um, talk to the officials there, you know, the school districts were just really tickled because they were bringing in millions of extra dollars and the county was really tickled because they were bringing in a lot of tax dollars and, 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 and um, some, of those, um, some of those fees, and so, as well as the local municipality. In Pennsylvania, we didn't have any of that. We, we've got that now, but there's still some issues there. And, and counties, you know, for land preservation programs and, and some of those easement things and infrastructure concerns, um, similar to the local municipalities. We, we put, when we put our task force together, we created a number of committees. Um, one of the first things we did once we realized the, the railroad that was heading towards us, the freight train that was heading towards us, uh, we got all the gas companies in one room and we met with them. Um, and, and our task force had economic development people, public safety people, environmental people, bankers, um, a lot of a lot of good cross section that were handpicked by the, by the county. Um, and, and we sat down with the gas industries and said, hey, here's who we are, here's our concerns. Now uh, tell us who you are and let's establish some kind of working relationship. I think that helped us quite a bit get off on the right foot um, when we realized that there was no avoiding it, that this is what was going to happen. Um, we started to work um, with the industry. And, you know, knock on wood, you know, Bradford County's been pretty lucky with the companies that, that we have in there. It's, you know, there's some neighbors that have had some real disasters happen in the Susquehanna seems to come to mind an awful lot, um, and, and that company is in, in, in our county. So, um, like I said, different companies, um, different relationships. It's just a bunch of, you know, people often ask me, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Um, I'm, you know, it's a plus and minus on, on both sides. I mean, you know, leases, you know, brought in a lot of revenue. Um, we saw a lot of our farmers um, decide that you know, they could pay off the mortgage, they could buy new equipment, they upgraded. Some of them, on the other hand, sold their herds. They said, hey, I don't have to get up at four in the morning to milk cows anymore. And so I've got some income now. Um, that, that connection to land might have been lessened a little bit where you had three or four generations on a farm and all of a sudden they're saying, okay, I've gotten my income out of this potentially now, maybe I'm looking to sell this or transfer that farm to somebody else. Um, you know, the downside is that, you know, we weren't that great uh, experts at leasing, so maybe we negotiated away more than what we could. Um, plus, you know, unemployment dropped, but again, the competition for labor and impacts on those local businesses were there, so, you know, again, that's the plus and minus. Real estate values went up, but again, we had those high housing crises and shortages and impact on fixed income families. And this isn't, like I said, this isn't unusual. Um, I talked with a county commissioner from Texas um, and when they were up visiting us and um, they said the same thing happened in their county, that people on fixed incomes had to move away out of the county because they couldn't afford to live there. Um, there's lots of hard stories like that. 
skilled jobs, you know, they were available, um, but, but it, it took some time for the locals to get trained um, and take those positions. And, and we had a lot of people from outside the county that filled those jobs until that started to happen. Um, a, a business boom, um, you know, I, I, was at a, I was on a panel up in Rochester uh, once. It was kind of interesting, there was a professor from, from Cornell there when he gave his presentation of this, the, the tourism industry is going to be devastated by this gas industry. And, and it kind of shook the audience up. And then it's that example of critical thinking. And when we got done, I asked him a question. I said, well, how did you determine that? And he looked a little confused. And I said, well, how do you count tourism dollars? And um, again, a little confused. And I said, well, you know, we have the tourism, regional tourism director on our advisory panel. And, and um, if you count it by the dollars brought into the county, well, we have six new motels that are charging $130 a night, and, and you can't have a room for a year. We have restaurants that are totally full. The attractions, because these people bring their families, are, are, are filled. So they're seeing our tourism income quadruple every year as far as the dollars are brought in. If that's your evaluation of tourism, then the, the Chamber of Commerce is and the tourism people are, are really tickled. It's a different type of tourists, but again, they're filling all those things. So like I said, whether that's good or bad, it is, you need to think through that. And he was painting a picture. People started to rethink that. Okay, boy, if I can fill my hotel or my bed and breakfast and my, um, you know, my restaurants, then maybe it's, it's not totally terrible from an economic perspective. Um, our roads were improved by industry, but that reconstruction of heavy traffic Traffic and accidents, our accident rates have gone way up because of that heavy traffic. Um, our office is um, three miles from the courthouse, and so I need to go to the courthouse quite a bit. Sometimes it took me 40 minutes to get to the, to the courthouse, and, and that was unacceptable. Um, and that's what we put up with for a long time. Now, having said that, you know, gas prices have been really uh, deflated because of that early map I showed you. Every time you turn around, there's a new gas um, play being discovered. Um, I was at an industry meeting about three weeks ago, and their projection was and gas is somewhere around $3 a thousand cubic feet now, which is pretty low. It, it, it was as high as $17 uh, a thousand. Um, so there's a, there's a cash flow issue. They can only drill so many wells without realizing that, and they're not going to sell all the reserves that they're tapping for three dollars a thousand. So as a result, a lot of our a lot of our wells are, are barely turned on just to keep the gas flowing, but they're not gonna they're not gonna send a lot of it to market. That's had an impact on everybody that's expecting royalties aren't getting royalties right now. The other is is that the, the industry is projecting that those low rates will probably continue for, for ten years or so. Um, because there is an overabundance of natural gas and there's no markets for it. So until we started building power plants that are fueled by natural gas and the cars that we run are fueled by natural gas, you're going to see that deflated price. So as a result, you know, that drilling activity. At one point, uh, a couple of years ago, we had 50 rigs in our county drilling, which is more than I think all of Texas had at one point. Just, just in our county, um, we were down about five of them now. So they've gone to where the wet gas is, the oil, um, just from a cash flow perspective. They're not giving up any of their holdings, but they're not developing it. So they'll be back, they said, we'll be back with a vengeance when the price goes up. So, you know, that's, that's something to, to consider. You know, I asked them about New York, um, happen to be a resident in New York too. Um, you know, what are they going to do? And I said, well, you know, if it ever opens up, there won't be the same flurry of activity as there was in Bradford County. First, because the price is too low and we're already overextended. Um, and, and so um, you might not see the same results that, that we saw in Bradford County. So again, you need to, you need to think through that. Um, cultural diversity, you know, Bradford County was pretty, pretty homogenous. And we finally got cultural diversity in here, but you know, from a, a social network or, or support structure, we didn't have you know, a lot in place and it's still, pretty backwards. I mean, we had, again, a lot of new people in there, and, um, you know, a lot of those people were isolated. Um, you know, they didn't have places to go. Um, you know, the, the, the community was welcoming, but could have been probably more so. Um, 
environmental projects, the, the gas industry has provided some income and, and some partnership environmental projects, but they also have had impacts on our environment also. Um, uh, some websites that maybe um, you want to access, the, the, uh, the Bradford County PA.org, we have a section on there that has some of the maps and some of the statistics that I had in my PowerPoint presentation. So that's available if you ever want to look at that. Our planning commission has done a lot of work to plot where all those pipelines. That's something we learned from Texas when we went down there was um, they admitted that they had no idea where all these pipes were. And, and that's, you know, I didn't mention that, but when you look at seven, eight hundred miles of pipelines, and we're in a county where planning and zoning isn't, isn't real popular, that is planning and zoning because you can't build and develop on top of those pipelines. So wherever there's a pipeline, now that's restricted from putting a house on it or putting a factory or an industry on top of that. So, you know, that's kind of happening um, in a kind of an uncontrolled way in, in, in Pennsylvania. You know, really, the only thing that controls where those pipelines go is the landowner and, and who's willing to sign a lease and who's not willing to sign a lease. So that's, again, so, something to think about. Um, but our planning commission is doing a great job of plotting where every well is, where every you know, water supply, those maps that I showed, um, they're, they're doing a good job of showing that so that people can find that. You, you can find that through our state system too. Our Department of Environmental Protection has a uh, has an e-map section that you can go to and try and find it. It's terrible, cumbersome. Even, even with our high-speed computers at the office, it's hard to find where everything is. But, but it's there if you want to. With that, I guess, you know, we've got some time, you know, some questions. I'm sure there's a lot of things that I didn't hit that you're probably curious about. Uh, I'm, I'm good until they kick us out. Yes. Okay, just a about this, uh, some of the numbers that you, early in the presentation you stated that Bradford County is roughly uh, 750,000 square miles? Is that no, that's the acres. Or or acres. Okay, acres. Yeah, I meant acres. And you have roughly 2,500 wells. And you said that there are 600 acres per... No, five acres. Well, I meant as far as the throw, though. I meant as far as with the horizontal oh, yeah, yeah. and going towards the throw. Well, are a lot larger now. Yeah. Probably closer to 1,200. Let's, if you assume that there's each one of those averages 750 yeah. acres, yeah. then it's like there's a lot more wells, you know, for, for coverage for, you yeah. know, the acreage that you yeah. have. Well, yeah. why, why is that? I, and, and like said, that, those are illustrative. I'm, I don't have a handle on how many pads because we don't, we don't have that information. We have to you know how many permits there are. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm making some assumptions. Some of those are, are, are maybe too big, and that's, that's probably one of them. If you, if you do the math, then probably saturation is 1,000 um, pads. Um, I'm not sure, like I said, some of those are, are going a lot closer. Um, I've looked at some of those production units, some of the companies have shared it, and some of them are a lot smaller than, than you know, there are maybe 300 or 500 acre um, units, and that's because Again, that geology of war, they have restrictions, and so they decided to lock up this, this spot. So, I, yeah, yeah. So take that, like, take that with a grain of yeah. salt. One possibility, I suppose, is the fact that where you go down vertically, there's a, there's a finite radius that they're going to turn, so they can't really get to some of the gas in, in the play kind of directly underneath them, so maybe they have to kind of overlap to come back and, and, there's, and there's, get those there's, areas. We don't have forced integration in Pennsylvania like we do in New York. Mm -hmm. So if there's a block of people that do not want, you know, their gas exploited or, or drilled, it's it's um, it's trespass to drill underneath somebody's property without without lease. So there are definitely units that, that you know, there are a group of people that say no, 
you know, we're not going to sign the lease, and so that that stops that production unit from going. I, I think I would correct you on that. Two of my cousins got snapped. Snapped. Yeah, they got snapped. They were in a production unit, and they had the same thing that's being offered here in New York, where they had the choice to either sign up and go with the flow, or uh, not sign up. So that they, they flow gas properly. 
Um, again, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go there too much because I'm not a chemist, but that stuff I know is posted, and, and it's there's been a lot more daylighting of what they use now than what there was when it first started. What happens to the chemicals? Um, you've got a couple of fluids. First, there's the drilling fluid that I talked about. It comes back as part of the drilling process, and that's collected um, and, and taken to an approved site. There's also, and, and this is an interesting issue, they call it you know, the production fluid, the stuff that after you fracture it, that 30% that comes back up and is captured. Um, and, and that's that return fluid. There, in, in regulatory language, it's, you know, that, that return fluid um, is, all, is called, I forget the exact name of it, but it's only good for 90, only good for 90 days. After that, it becomes production fluid, which is regulated differently. So, you know, if, you, if you're flowing the gas, you get a lot of that return. That's captured and recycled, as I mentioned, and most of the companies are now reutilizing it on the next, the next fracture side. And the stuff that comes up continuously is called something that, that's the production fluid, and that, that could happen, depending on your geology now, in Bradford County, you have very dry gas, so you're not seeing much of that return once that, that initial flow comes back. In, in some counties, you know, you see those tanks on, on site, that's to collect any moisture or any fluid that comes up and that's collected and disposed of. But again, you've got the, the three different types and, and the, regulatory, the regulatory consideration changes after you go from the flow back to the production fluid. That's something to pay attention to. Yeah. The, lady in the, back the people, the personnel that have to stay on these sites, is there any data on their health? Are these people getting sick at an yeah, increased rate? I don't, I couldn't. I couldn't and also I'm wondering if anyone is testing the milk from the cows that are are near these sites. Yeah, but they're, I mean, that's been a big concern. So the Department of Health and just, you know, the dairy people have been looking at that. Yeah. Are there any state parks in that? Yes, there is. Yeah, not because of the state park. So what's the, uh, uh, yeah, it's, they, we've got we've got state forest land, we have state game lands, and we have state park lands in Bradford County. Each of those are administered by a different state agency. Um, to date, none of, no no one's drilled on our state lands, but the state forest land and the state game lands are both being drilled on in, in Bradford County. And that's a good one. Somebody needs to be notified and, and, and determine it. By, by design, it's not supposed to be so. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's holding it right. Yeah. No. 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 So that's it's that's supposed to contain the spills. Hours. No. But they, they need to, I mean, they usually have a vacuum truck, truck on site that's supposed to vacuum all of that up and take it to a disposal mm -hmm. site. So that, you know, if that's not happening, then somebody's not doing their job. Now, you know, and that, that's, Part of the story is, you know, you can, again, I think I mentioned that you can have the best regulations in the world. It's, it's how you enforce compliance with that. I mean, our our state DEP is just as stressed as DEC or anywhere else. And you know, if you've got that many permits just in one county, 
you know, how much territory can a person, and how, many, how often do they visit those sites. Um, there has been admissions that there's sometimes when there's never a regulatory person visiting that site. It could be, it, it, you know, it could be completed before they ever get somebody out there. Another issue I thought was curious, I was looking at um, violations issued, and one of them was um, against the, the operator because the well pad had not been restored to its original condition. And there was some time limit following the drilling when it was supposed to be restored. But you've got Chesapeake establishing six well pads, drilling one well northeast, one well northwest, one southeast to hold the to hold the on that whole unit and moving on. So they're intending to come back and drill two more and then come back and drill two more and come back and retract. And they've got this containment system, the lab of containment system set up to protect the surrounding area. I mean, they wouldn't destroy that, rebuild, destroy that, rebuild it. No, and so that, I find it odd that the, reg the regulations certainly were not in sync with current industry practice. If they're being fined for that well pad still, still being in existence mm -hmm. 90 days or 120 days after the, their last drilling operation. Yeah, no, you, you bring up a, a good point. The point being is, um, you know, how the, the industry says, okay, we're going to build this pad and, and you know, the claim is, is that once we're done drilling, we'll restore that pad and we'll shrink down to this one acre postage stamp and you won't see much. And so, um, asking them the same question you asked them is, well, wait a minute, you've only drilled one well here, you plan to come back and do maybe half a dozen more. Um, the other question is, is as those, those wells start to drop in production, are they going to come back and refract those and, and right now, the industry is, is kind of responding, no, we'll probably drill another well in between those two laterals. And so you could be looking at decades yeah. before they're finished, before they can restore that. Mm -hmm. So they're always pretty vague on how long it'll be before they actually do the restoration. I, I, I mean, I'd be, you know, that's another thing that, I, you know, they were penalized for not restoring it. I, I, I guess I have to look into the specifics of that because they, you're right, they're, they're not finished until they're finished, and so they're not going to make them pull that, that pad apart. It might have been they didn't stabilize it properly, or they didn't, you know, so again, we, you know, I know when we do inspections when we had the program, and we have the delegation for the program for erosion sedimentation control and, and, and other sites, typically we'll go out during construction or whatever, if they haven't stabilized it in some manner, in a permanent way, and Pennsylvania, you've got a certain amount of time, and then you've got to permanently stabilize it with grass or something. If you haven't done that, then, then that's that's a violation, and we write them up right away. So it could be a situation where the berms weren't properly vegetated, and they weren't getting grass growing or something like that. So, like I said, the specifics, they will always look this, I mean, this, this is exciting. Beautifully done. Yeah. Okay. It's just that, that, that it's like the one area where they can let the water up. Every time you go out, you see that it's and that, and that should, yeah, no, it should, shouldn't be, and that's probably why we recited. Yes? Yeah, Mike, early in your presentation, you had one illustration that showed what I guess I'd call a drill rig, a drill pad with one steel drill rig on it. Then you had another illustration with six horizontal runs coming off of it. Did those six horizontal runs come off of that one drill pad, drill rig? Yes, yeah. They did. Yeah, but, and, and they've said they may even get as high as a dozen on one, one pad. But they're, and, and They'll drill the one hole, um, and, and the rigs are, they got to pull them down to move them to do the next hole. They have nudged them along. They, have, they, have, they, they may drill a hole, and then with a combination of heavy equipment, maybe nudge that rig over and do another hole. But before they can do the others, they have to pull that whole rig down. And so I'm wondering if that one hole, no. can they make six? No, no. no. So every time they go down in the ground, they have to go another way. It's a new hole. Right? Okay. Only one, one you said that too. So, yeah. uh, yes, yes, and no. I, I mean, the, no, we haven't. I mean, the staff's the same. But we see our, our development for, we do still see overseas the development for the earth disturbance. That's doubled 
you know, since this started. So just those other things other than the direct gas wells themselves and those bags. So yes, we've seen a lot of injuries from putting another person on to handle that. Um, so that, that has had an impact on I, this plus a lot of people come in with water quality questions. I, you know, even though um, everybody had their homes tested that were near a well by the company, the company hired a third party so it was independent and would hold up in court, people still don't trust those results. So a lot of people are, are also spending another six or eight hundred dollars to do that. And that was an interesting thing too. I mean, you know, it's kind of a study of human nature. Lab tests that used to cost four hundred dollars now cost eight hundred dollars. So every everybody is, you know, human degree is a different thing. Though. The, 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 uh, you know, all of our emergency services are predominantly volunteer fire companies, and um, the, there's a, the, the companies will come in and train a, a lot of those first responders, and, and essentially the training is don't go anywhere near the pad if there's an emergency, it's just because there's, there's odorless gas that can kill you, there's pressure things that go on, they don't want untrained people, the, the training is call us and we'll come there, you do the site containment. Um, but where we've seen an incredible amount of increases in traffic accidents and, and calls constantly because um, the truck traffic, um, people sliding off the road, uh, accidents. So our accident rate has really gone up just because of the increase in traffic. Mm -hmm. And that's really stressed our volunteer responders. But, but it has really stressed the county or the county budget. Oh, well, yeah, it has. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, every one of those sites has to be 911 listed. I, we found that out really quick too. Um, the companies didn't want to sign them up because they're not permanent, you know, as a 911. But then a lot of these people from out of town, if they had an accident, had no idea where they were. They were somewhere back in the you know hills here. So to get people, you know, that, that was a negotiation with the companies is that every site has to be listed with a 911 address so they can send emergency vehicles out. But it has, yeah. So no, there, there's been very real economic impacts. Um, the, the, the tax revenues went up uh, in the county. Um, you talk to, you know, two of our county commissioners and they're saying it's great. And you talk to the other one and he's not going to say it's so great. So, like How about school taxes? School taxes? We haven't seen a lot of drop in school taxes, no. No, everybody's still pretty stressed. You know. So the average person is actually paying more in taxes than less before the project began. Yeah, they, they, they probably are. And, and some of our state legislators, that was their philosophy, is that, well, we're already collecting taxes. We're collecting from the landowners that are getting payments for this. We're collecting more sales taxes. We're collecting, you know, bed taxes off of real estate. Why should we tax the industry? So it was, it was an interesting debate to watch. They all went across. Just a few months ago, the Brad County just paid off all their debt. Yep, yep, that was that Act 13 money. Um, that was finally, after about two years of trying in Pennsylvania, finally passed an impact fee, and that's based on the number of, uh, the number of wells. Um, it was a compromise. A lot of that money's going statewide to pay off a lot of other things, but Brad County did. We got 20% got of the permits in the state, so. Yeah, some of the differences, I think, with New York State is a little bit different. Pennsylvania, one is, is that we also have an ad alarm tax where production gas is actually taxed and it goes directly to our school districts, which makes a huge difference. So, that was, so that was actually Texas down in your yeah. county talking about that. They got mad at me at one point because they didn't want to tax the gas companies anymore. Right. It, it was, uh, like I said, it's based on your philosophical bent, you know, some people said, hey, you know, look at all the income our, our businesses are getting. But again, the reality is there were social economic impacts that weren't being addressed. There actually has been a study done, and I wanted to get this to this lady, there was a study done in Australia, has been going on for quite a while now on the gas workers. And we do have that on our website under Thank hot you. topics about help. And it's quite a study. It's really quite impressive. I just want to say uh, we probably should wrap up in about 10 minutes. So just. You know. uh, could you tell me what the history of Bradford County was in regard to uh, vertical frack wells? Very, very little. Very little. Uh, we, we had really no. Yeah, there two or three maybe in the county. Very, very little. Um, very little gas development. Yeah, the reason I'm asking is that there is a 
lot of gas wells up between the uh, finger lakes in New York State, between Seneca and Bay Lake, it's between Old and Geneva. If you drive up along Route 1496, it's just loaded with gas wells. And I think virtually all of them are vertical track wells, because they've all got pullback tanks with them. So I have to assume that they were track. And they, those were done back in the early 70s. Yeah, yeah. No, we just don't have the geology for it. We don't have that, that limestone, that porous geology that would have pockets of gas that would be back. So, right. that, you know, this. Um, the, the, the uh, endangered and threatened species act, is that a factual at all in, in some specific area? Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, it is. They, they got to stay with the pipelines. They got to mitigate or they got to work around that. Um, and we have a, we basically have a web site. That can, in the coordinates and tell whether it's a hit or not. If it is, then the agency has to come and clear that before you move that down. PNDI, Pennsylvania National University of Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's one of, again, one of the nuances of, of you know, some of the other ways to be all here. Because you know we've got Utica underneath the Marcellus. So, I mean that's that's you know that's stage two. You know, they could be here. We could be a gas development area for the next century. You know, all in that Hi, right, Mike. Uh, I missed the beginning of your presentation, but I caught the housing prices, and I understand that the environmental aspect of this really takes the spotlight with everything. And I think to focus on the environmental aspect would be the initial drilling process. Because uh, I don't quite understand how you could pull all of the liquid out that you used for that original drilling. But I also think that it's important to focus on the social and economic aspects of this, uh, which I feel like don't really get enough of the spotlight. How fast did you say that the housing prices increased? In, or you didn't say how fast, you said they increased quite substantially, but how fast did this almost, occur? Almost immediately. You, know, once you saw that, that permit chart. I, I maybe missed that, but it, it, once once they moved into the county, once you know when they started, it was two, three, four wells, and the industry was getting a feel for okay, how do we drill this? As I mentioned earlier, geology is different in every county, and even within the county, it might be different. So they would figure out okay, where, how can we guide that drill? How can we get the maximum? Once they figured out there was gas there and there was a sweet spot. They pulled out all the plugs, and like I said, at one point we had